Uhuru, brothers and sisters. For those of you who don't know, Uhuru means freedom. It means black freedom. It means nappy-haired freedom. It, mean, it means broad nose and thick lip freedom. It means mild mouth freedom. It means death to colonialism freedom, Uhuru. My name is Omali Chatel and I'm chairman of the African People's Socialist Party. I'm leader of the Uhuru movement and the International African Revolution. I want to welcome everyone to this discussion. On today, what we want to talk about is a question of Kamala Harris. As many of you know, there the Democratic National Convention is happening now. And uh, it has all uh, been declared officially that Joe Biden, the senator from uh, Delaware, or the former senator from Delaware, the former uh, vice president uh, under Barack Hussein Obama, uh, is now officially the standard bearer uh, for the Democratic Party in the contest for, to become uh, president of the United States. He has chosen uh, as his vice president uh, Kamala Harris. She uh, is a, a person who has uh, come to uh, some uh, acclaim and, and notoriety over the process of the uh, presidential uh, campaign, Democratic presidential uh, campaign. And uh, as could be expected, uh, the uh, putting forth Kamala Harris as his vice presidential choice has uh, led to a lot of discussion. Uh, some people are ecstatic. Uh, many people, uh, uh, or it appears to be many people anyway, uh, see Kamala Harris uh, characterized as the first uh, black woman who uh, has been a, a presidential nominee from a major presidential party or vice pres presidential uh, uh, force a nominee for a major uh, a political party uh, to be uh, the first uh, woman uh, to uh, have achieved uh, uh, that uh, designation as the uh, as the pre vice presidential candidate of a major uh, political party. Uh, some people say that as a, a fantastic victory, and uh, of course that's how it's being pushed and promoted, uh, not only uh, by. Uh, the Democratic Party, but it is being uh, pushed and promoted even uh, by uh, forces who are opposed to uh, the Democratic Party and Joe Biden being elected. This idea that uh, Kamala Harris uh, represents a form of progress, that it represents progress uh, for black people and it represents progress uh, for African people. We've seen uh, some women uh, who, from our community, who uh, have shown uh, their, uh, their uh, celebratory uh, uh, ex ex uh, expectations of uh, this uh, nomination and uh, 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 how much it should mean. Uh, even uh, a, a, a person, an uh, iconic figure from our struggle in the 1960s, Angela Davis, has stepped forward. And she has made statements to the effect that uh, uh, although that we don't like what Kamala Harris did when she was the uh, district attorney uh, in San Francisco and the assistant DA in Oakland, California, and we don't like what she did uh, when she was the attorney general of the United States, uh, that some kind of feminist uh, policy, she said, some feminist uh, 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 assumptions um, make it possible for us to overlook those contradictions. And of course, the contradictions that they are talking about, or she is talking about, are those that have resulted in, in, in hundreds and hundreds of African people uh, being locked up in prison. And sometimes uh, with uh, Kamala Harris uh, uh, actually doing uh, nearly uh, uh, the equivalent of dancing uh, at her success uh, in having uh, people in prison on one occasion at least. Uh, even after DNA and other evidence uh, indicated that somebody was innocent, uh, she has uh, pushed for his execution, black man, for his execution because he didn't get his paperwork in on time. 
so uh, this is what we are talking about when we look at Kamala Harris and we're looking at uh, how we can overlook uh, some of her, her uh, contradictions based on the fact uh, that uh, some feminist uh, uh, instinct or some feminist uh, position uh, should put that, uh, should uh, make it possible for us to overlook those contradictions. We don't have to say that much about Joe Biden. Uh, Joe Biden, of course, is, is the guy uh, who uh, put forth the 1994 uh, uh, crime bill. Uh, he, he worked on it uh, uh, constantly. He's the one who shepherded through virtually uh, every necessary committee, uh, made all the deals uh, that had to be made in order to get it, uh, get it passed. Joe Biden uh, is the one who, with the 1994 crime bill, the crime bill that uh, resulted in 100,000 uh, policemen being put in the streets throughout this country, and perhaps uh, one of them, perhaps one of them uh, killed uh, uh, George Floyd. Uh, perhaps one of them uh, uh, is responsible uh, for uh, the murder of Mike Brown. Uh, but the point is that Biden is the one who put that forward, and it was something that was carried on the ballot uh, with William Jefferson Clinton. Uh, and uh, so you had that. It's a, a crime bill uh, that created more than 60 uh, new offenses that uh, would uh, could uh, uh, demand the death penalty uh, in federal in federal uh, courts. So this is Biden, uh, and and uh, he is more than that, as you know. Uh, just in terms of his horrible anti-African, uh, his whole colonial uh, attitude that despite the fact that uh, he is the one who, for example, when uh, Barack Hussein Obama was nominated by the Democratic Party, said that uh, uh, the good thing about Obama is that uh, he, he was clean uh, and he is a black uh, person who speaks uh, good English uh, when he wants to. Uh, and so this is Biden. This is the same Biden who fought against what was supposed to be, in the minds of many liberals, uh, uh, the, the ingredient that would uh, uh, integrate or uh, desegregate schools in this country. He fought uh, against uh, the busing of African people. Uh, and of course, we know that that wouldn't have made a dime's worth of difference in terms of the real relationship we have to the system. But the fact is that uh, the white people who uh, he was courting, didn't understand that. He worked uh, very closely with the reactionary uh, Jim Crow Ku Klux Klan's uh, politicians uh, in the U.S. Uh, Congress. So this is Biden. So Biden uh, clearly is no friend, a uh, friend of African people. So in the form... So uh, in the form of... Uh, in the, uh, here we have Biden, who's put 100,000 uh, policemen in the streets of this country. Uh, on the one hand, and then we have Kamala Harris uh, as prosecutor uh, who was using those police to lock black people up throughout, uh, throughout California. So uh, this, this is who they are. And, and the fact is that people have mentioned that. This is not something that uh, people, uh, many people are unaware of. And as I said, uh, we had forces like Angela Davis who are saying despite who Kamala uh, Harris is, despite her, her record, uh, it is a, a historic thing that the feminist, uh, ha the feminist uh, instinct that has me uh, makes it necessary for us to overlook these uh, these uh, issues with her and to be able to support her. Fact is that we hear some of the same things about Kamala Harris uh, that we heard about uh, uh, Barack Hussein Obama when he ran for office. That despite his uh, record, despite uh, the uh, vacuous and empty platform that made no mention of serving the interests of African people, nor of serving the interests of uh, others uh, in this country and the oppressed peoples around the world as president of the main, uh, of the international uh, chief hegemon predator of the world. Despite all of that, it's good symbol. And this is what they say about Kamala Harris too, that this symbolic victory, they have this black woman who has now in the, is in the process of ascending uh, to uh, being uh, the, uh, the, the vice presidential uh, candidate of the Democratic Party. And uh, uh, there are forces who have said that. And there are uh, uh, even uh, people who, uh, many uh, forces who call themselves leftists and revolutionaries uh, work with, uh, like Bernie Sanders, who is now talking about what a good job that uh, 
Harris is going to do, how, what a big difference this is going to make. And many other leftist forces uh, who uh, Africans and uh, some Africans and uh, many liberal leftists uh, had looked to, uh, to make the big difference uh, in the Democratic Party. Many of the people who thought uh, that Bernie Sanders uh, presence in the uh, electoral process was going to push the Democratic Party uh, to the left to make it something that uh, looks uh, more revolutionary, more progressive, uh, if you will. Uh, now uh, on board uh, with this Kamala Harris uh, uh, choice and uh, putting forth Kamala Harris and Joe Biden as this great uh, uh, new force that's going to be able to unseat Trump and uh, make a lot of difference for the people in this country. And people are frightened. And I recognize and understand that, especially a lot of uh, working class people uh, in our own community, that is to say the African community, and a lot of uh, people who call themselves progressives and leftists uh, otherwise are frightened. They are terrified uh, by the idea of another term uh, for Donald Trump. And it's like, uh, uh, regardless of what kinds of crimes and offenses uh, that uh, these persons who are from the Democratic Party, uh, Biden and Harris, uh, have committed or may commit, uh, we have to for, uh, vote for them because otherwise Trump is going to gain a hold uh, on the uh, presidency. And then uh, they are prepared to say and will say uh, by the time this presentation is over uh, that if you uh, go against uh, uh, Biden, if you go against Trump, then what you're doing is facilitating the re-election of Donald Trump. And uh, so uh, that is a terrifying prospect for many people who will not come out and say right up front that Kamala Harris is not representative of our people and that there's no basis, no real reason in the world uh, why anybody should organize to vote for and support Kamala Harris. So, uh, uh, and so we're prepared to have that discussion with anybody. And the only reason it's necessary to have that discussion with anybody is because we're at a place today where opportunism reigns supreme in what used to be a revolutionary movement uh, in this country and around the world by African people. This question of Kamala Harris and the electoral process is not something that's peculiar and, and specific uh, to uh, African people or people in the United States. This question of the electoral process and how it is to be treated is something that revolutionaries uh, around the world are grappling with and the peoples around the world are grappling with. Just the other day, we see that the military overthrew uh, the government in Mali. It's a reactionary neo-colonial government, a puppet of French and US imperialism who occupy uh, 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 Mali in, in the real uh, sense and starve and, and, and exploit and oppress our people. And what we've seen subsequent to the military coup is that people are dancing in the streets, but we've seen them dance in the streets in Egypt. We've seen them dance in the streets uh, in, 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 in other places around the world when these thugs have been overthrown only to find themselves back in the same situation they were in prior to the removal of those faces of white power. And what we are confronted with today is the fact that many of the people are trapped. Uh, they feel like they are trapped. Uh, if we don't vote for Biden and Harris, then what the hell is going to happen to us? That's the assumption that many people are moving with, and they're too afraid not to, not to support Harris. They are more afraid of Trump uh, than they are it, uh, for any kind of program that Biden and Harris might be bringing. Biden and Harris cannot bring forth a program uh, that will speak to the interests of Africans and oppressed and working class people here and around the world. So they, we, it's not that we are voting for a program that they are presenting or people are being asked to, people are being asked to vote against Trump. People are saying, let your fears uh, make the decision for you on the one hand. And on the other hand, many people, Africans in particular are being duped in, uh, by the fact that Kamala Harris is a woman. And so as a woman, uh, this feminist instinct, this this, uh, uh, this historic event of a, a black woman being uh, uh, on the ticket of a major political party is uh, overcoming any kind of uh, examination of who she is, what her politics are, and what that means in terms of forwarding the movement of black people, whether it pro progresses us or whether it sets us back. These are the kinds of issues that we have to deal with. And it doesn't matter that Kamala Harris is an African woman. Uh, we've seen 
if, if being black was enough uh, to satisfy uh, what it is that we're looking for, all we have to do is look all over the continent of Africa where puppets have been put in power, kept in power, manipulated in power uh, uh, by uh, either France or the United States or other imperialist powers there. And they bleed the people, they steal the resources uh, from uh, Africa and from the people and send them to these major corporations, just like Obama gave trillions of dollars uh, to the corporations here uh, inside the United States and other places as well. Uh, so being black is not enough because we've seen these. If that was a the solution, then there would be nothing but freedom and happiness and joy all over the continent of Africa. But Africa is suffering more now than it was before these puppets were put in power. And they were put in power because they need to be able to disguise the reality that imperial white power is the dominating force. And it cannot operate in its own face anymore because the masses of people have become conscious of this white colonial domination. And the masses of people have begun to chant, kill the white devils and things like that. So then white devils can't come in their own face. They come looking like us. They eat fufu, like we eat fufu. They go to the same clubs that we go to. They know the same dances and, and handshakes, et cetera, but they're not us. And this is uh, something that we cannot make this mistake about because people say we have to vote for Kamala because she's one of us. She's not one of us. And I'm not talking about she's not one of us because she's supposed to be of some mixed heritage and the, and the like. I'm not saying that because of that. I never even condemned Barack Hussein Obama because he's supposed to have been some mixed person. I don't even know what the hell mixed is. Uh, but I'm saying this because they're not one of us because they represent imperialist white power. It's colonialism. It is, it is, it is colonialism in black, in, 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 in black face. It's white power in black face. And this is the basis of the opposition. So the reason we have in this discussion in part is because we had a revolutionary movement. It didn't start off as revolutionary movement. It was a movement that grew out of what people refer to as the civil rights movement that, uh, that uh, gained more and more clarity and more and more momentum and challenged this uh, whole social system to its foundation. It developed into an anti-colonial movement that we characterize as the Black Power Movement. We saw the emergence of the Black Panther Party. And as this occurred, what we saw happen also uh, was a diminishing of the significance of the Democratic Party. The fact is that by 1965, when universal suffrage happened in this country uh, through the hard blood work, you wanna hold up an African woman that you need to look at, look at Fannie Lou Hamer, look at Ella Baker. These were people who actually talked about against imperialism and fought for the liberation of our people. And, and Ella, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer once said that in 1964, she said, I fought like hell to get into the Nas Democratic National Convention. By 1968, she said, I fought to get the hell out because it came, she came to understand exactly what she was dealing with that social system. So if you got to say one of us, then look at Fannie Lou Hamer, look at Ella Baker, Look at other women who actually stood up to fight against the, the social system and never repudiated the revolution and never, ever, ever uh, compromised the, uh, the fact that we have to stand up for the freedom and liberation of our people and also peoples around the world. That is not Kamala Harris, ain't Kamala Harris. And uh, so then the question is left, uh, here, here we have this movement, incredible movement developed, blew up. Uh, and it was this movement of, of, of thousands of poor people, starving people, facing water hoses and facing cattle prize. You know, you've heard the line, our people have died so that we have the right to vote. People, people fought because they wanted freedom. That's what they fought for. They didn't fight just to vote. The vote uh, uh, is empty if it doesn't produce the freedom that the people fought for. So you had the people struggling, changing uh, the ground uh, in this country and affecting struggle all around the world. And the people in the process of changing the world change themselves and move from this passive instrument that could be these passive entity that could be used by the Democratic Party, manipulated to go here and go there and became recognized that even after we achieve uh, the so-called uh, universal suffrage, the, suffrage uh, the Voting Rights Act of, of, was passed when? 1965. The Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965. This is what gave universal suffrage to all of us, but the movement didn't start. Then it escalated and it moved beyond the so-called voting rights. And then in 1966, the man was what? Black 
power. Saying it's not enough just to just to have rights to vote. We have to have power over our own lives. That was an anti-Akronian demand. And it led uh, this, this escalating struggle of our people led to a war against our movement. Did we talk about political prisoners stuffing the prisons in this country right now who came from that period? We talking about Malcolm X being assassinated by the United States government, King being assassinated by the United States government. More than 30 members of the Black Panther Party in 1968 alone uh, were, were uh, wiped out by the United States government. And more and more, more than 300 thrown in prison. Fred Hampton in 1969 was killed to stop a revolutionary movement. At this time, we weren't looking for the Democratic Party to solve our problems. We weren't looking to go, oh, I hope the white man gets a, a nice Negro uh, to be a solution for us. We were looking to solve our own problems. We came, built our own revolutionary organization, had our own programs. The Democratic Party does not have a revolutionary program. It does not have a program that speaks to the interests of African people. So. So I'm saying, well, you know, you can't have everything. So we just have to take what we got and in whatever off is offered to us. And I say that's wrong. That uh, one thing I want to introduce you to is that uh, we don't have to settle for that. We don't have to assume responsibility for the election of Trump no more than we were responsible when he was elected before, as people have tried to say that the reason he was elected because enough black people didn't come out uh, to vote uh, uh, against Trump, to, to vote for uh, uh, Hillary Clinton uh, and uh, lying Hillary Clinton, uh, reactionary Hillary Clinton. Uh, that's why they said uh, we, uh, this, this Trump is in office and that's not true. And uh, the same forces that put Trump in power, uh, keep Trump in power, also the forces that are presenting uh, representing Biden. Biden represents them as well. I mean, they're going to be uh, Democrats and Republicans speaking throughout this convention, uh, uh, this Democratic convention. So what is it then that we have to do? We have to build movement. There is no easy way out of this. There's no, okay, let's get this white person or that Negro person and just vote for them. It's going to be uh, a hunky-dory, so to speak. The fact of the matter is that the power of our movement was stronger before we got the right to vote. It was the movement that got the right to vote. It was not the vote that got the movement. It was not the fact that we were voting and, and therefore things began to happen. It was a struggle of the people, a struggle that bears at least some minimal resemblance to the fact that millions of people throughout this country have been protesting and have been engaged uh, uh, in struggle that even uh, included insurrection almost uh, in, this, in, in this country. Millions of people, who have never, many of whom have never been involved in political life before. And they damn sure were not trying to get a Kamala Harris there. And they damn sure were not uh, mobilizing because of a Joe Biden. In fact, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are the people who will put them in jail. And I guarantee you right now, uh, even, even simple-minded stuff like uh, defund the police, uh, Biden couldn't support that. And, and, and so these are not forces who uh, represent our program, but neither could Bernie Sanders uh, support that because the police is the state and the state is the organization of coercion, repression. It is the military occupation of our communities that we call the police department throughout this country. None of them want to get rid of that. Uh, so you had a situation where, where Biden uh, puts 100,000 cops uh, in the streets in this country and then uh, who arrest people and send them to courts and there is Kamala waiting for them uh, to make sure as prosecutor uh, that they get good, they get a lot of time and she's uh, against even minimal, minimal reforms uh, in that process. So <laughs> the revolution was crushed and defeated. And the agenda that was coming out of that revolution, even Martin Luther King's Poor People's Campaign, the one that Malcolm X talked about, the one that when he talked about how they said these Negroes were threatening to shut down Washington, he said that was the Black Revolution. King, uh, Malcolm said that. And he said Kennedy and the other liberal Democrats got called in the big six. Those are the big shot Negroes at the time, representing the big shot uh, a civil rights organization at the time. He said, call it off, call it off. And then he said, and Malcolm said, they said, uh, I'm sorry, boss, uh, we can't stop because we didn't start it. And that's what you have in the streets today. 
uh, increasingly the ruling class cannot stop it because they didn't start it. The petty bourgeoisie cannot stop it. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden cannot stop it. What has to happen is that we have to give a direction. When I say we, I'm certainly talking about revolutionaries and I'm talking about the African People's Socialist Party. That's our responsibility. I'm talking about the Uhuru movement. That's our responsibility to give it a direction, to give it ideological content and to raise the confidence of the people in their own capacity to change things. Let me just say this with you. I don't have much time left. I have uh, just a few minutes, but I just wanted to say that uh, the African People's Socialist Party has participated in building the Black is Bad Coalition for Social Justice, Peace, and Reparations. And one of the things that this coalition has done uh, is to uh, provide uh, leadership uh, based on the fact that, uh, that our revolution was crushed, our program for Black power was crushed, our program for the interests of working people was crushed uh, by the United States government, the, one, the same one that Biden uh, created uh, uh, cops uh, to kill. And I just want to read for you a, a revolutionary national, uh, we call a national Black political agenda for self-determination that came from the coalition. And this national black political agenda is our agenda. Democratic Party's agenda is not our agenda. You can fight for this agenda. Not only can you fight for this agenda that I'm gonna just tell you something about, I'm just gonna to read to you the declaration from this agenda. But also I'm going to call on you because this election, when this election happens, just, uh, just uh, uh, three days after this election, the Black is Bad Coalition is calling on African people from throughout this country to march on Washington, D.C. Uh, where we will host uh, the 11th consecutive uh, uh, mobilization march on the White House rally uh, that's around the question of Black power matters, uh, that says that Black community control of police, that says death to colonialism. That's the slogan that's coming uh, from the people. And this, this, this national black political agenda for self-determination was something that we put together before we heard of Kamala Harris uh, running for office, before we knew that Joe Biden was going to be the presidential uh, uh, nominee of the, of the uh, Democratic Party, because our people need this, right? Not the Democratic Party, our people need this. And so here's how it said, it could have been, it, this was written in 2016, and it could have been written today. Uh, and what it says uh, is the declaration, a critical moment in our history is upon us. In addition to the traditional centuries long destitution and political repression that has characterized our existence and distorted virtually all our intra-communal relations within the United States. There is now an escalation of police and other white violence directed at our people that demands a coherent response. The entire world is in a state of turmoil. The vast majority of the world's population that experiences poverty and cruelty as normal features of life is in a state of rebellion. Because the world capitalist system owes its existence to the enslavement of our people and colonial domination of much of the world, capitalism rests uneasily on a fault line of oppression. The historical oppression of our people stems from this cruel fact of history. Like most peoples of the world, we trace our current conditions of existence to the birth of the capitalist system at the expense of our happiness and human and material resources. We recognize the escalation of terror against black people that includes state and popular attacks and police and civilian murder. We understand that the prominent expression of white nationalism revealed through the electoral process to select a new president of the United States are due to the growth of resistance among oppressed populations of the world and within the US. We recognize that the apparent social peace within the US over the past 35 years or so has been illusory, a product of the successful brutal assault by the US government on the struggle of black people for justice and power in the 1960s. Our movement was obstructed by state imposed repression that included the political murders of important leaders from the community. Among these leaders were Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Fred Hampton and others. 
The false sense of social peace during this past period also depended on the disruption of the then developing black agenda that demanded peace, democracy, and end to poverty, political oppression, and the acquisition of black power. The US government and its millions of appointed or anointed black leaders have contributed to a defeatist outlook among our people that reduces our struggle to vain attempts to influence the two major US ruling parties to include the interests and aspirations of our people in the otherwise ruthless, terror-inducing imperial, imperialist agenda they normally represent. The US government's assault on our independent movement for black political power has created a worldview that promotes the US electoral process as the only viable means of forging and pursuing an agenda favorable to our interests. The Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations does not believe that our future should be in the hands of any institutions that does not have its origin within our own community and has not been forged through the struggles of our people. Black people therefore are gathering to consolidate our own national black political agenda for self-determination. With our national black political agenda for self-determination, we claim responsibility for our own future, independent of the Democratic and Republican parties or any other organization or institution external to our community. We are fully aware of the long history of betrayal of our people by both parties and refuse to submit our destiny to a slavish dependency on either of them. A conscious, as conscious women and men, we are declaring our intent to guarantee a future for our children and generations to come by creating an independent agenda for the progress of our people. We know that this agenda is not all encompassing. It cannot be. Our movement is in an, <clears throat> a developing stage. <clears throat> having been re-energized most recently by the August 9, 2014 uprising of poor working class young people on Canfield Drive in Ferguson, Missouri after the police murder of 18-year-old Michael Brown. <clears throat> we recognize that our national black political agenda for self-determination is in contention with the decisions made for us by the rulers of the US, <clears throat> their servants in our midst and other African people who may have legitimate disagreements with our views, but we cannot wait. History will not permit hesitation at this critical juncture. Our people demand participation in creating the future that awaits us. This development of our national black political agenda for self-determination is not an attempt to create a new political party or organization. The Black is Black Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations is a coalition in the truest sense of the word. We are an organization of organizations and individuals who have chosen to unite around a common set of principles for self-determination and a conscious struggle against world imperialism. We have seen the defeat of previous attempts to create a black agenda uh, by, we have seen attempts to create a black agenda for, uh, by premature, we have seen the defeat of uh, previous attempts to create a black agenda by prematurely creating new political formations before basic principles and organizations relations were firmly established that required first loyalty to our people rather than to the Democratic Party. We call on all organizations currently not affiliated with the Black is Black Coalition to join us as part of a process that will extend the political influence of all our movements and organizations while preserving the independence of each. So this is just a part of the uh, declaration that we put forth. And, saying this is what we can stand for. We don't have to wait uh, for a program that would come from the Democratic Party. We can put forth our own program. We can fight, we can take to the streets. We are expecting thousands of people to be in Washington, D.C. in November uh, for our, our rally, our, our, our march uh, on the White House uh, and our conference uh, under the slogan, Black Power Matters, Black Community Control of the Police and death to colonialism. And we expect to see you there too. This is the beginning of a new movement. It doesn't matter who it is that gets elected because our circumstances will not change unless we take them in our own hands. We've got hundreds perhaps of political prisoners uh, who are locked up, men and women who fought uh, to, for our freedom, 
You don't hear anything coming from Kamala Harris. You don't hear anything coming from Joe Biden saying free Sundiata. You don't hear anything saying free Mamiya. You don't hear anything saying free Leonard Peltier. You don't hear anything that says uh, free um, uh, Matula Shakur or any of the political prisoners, men and women who, whose courage are, are such that uh, they would put to shame any of these Negro politicians that we see out here today. Let me just give you a sense of what this National Black Political Agenda for Self-Determination stands for. The first point on there is Black women. So with this National Black Political Agenda for Self-Determination, the entire Black or African nation declares our commitment to facilitate the elevation of African women to full, equal partnership in our struggle to create a new world of freedom and socialist democracy for a unified, for a united Black community and a world shorn forever of bosses and workers and slaves and masters and where African women will share the power to guarantee that African women are adequately empowered as equal architects of our new world. Is that coming? You think Kamala means that in the Democratic Party? You think that's what's represented there? Number two, the Black family. We demand an in immediate halt to attacks on the Black family, a genocidal campaign rooted in the Atlantic slave trade and embedded in US public and private policy. United States has waged a ceaseless war on the Black family from the slaveholder that sold Africans as units of private property with no claims to family ties that he was bound to respect or she was bound to respect because a lot of white women were slave owners as well, uh, to the denial of adult of Black people the human right to protect our families, to the deliberate uh, exclusion of heads of Black households from employment uh, sufficient to provide for our families' needs, uh, the systemic undermining of Black family structures through public welfare programs such as the foster care system in which Black children are disproportionately taken away from families and in which parent, parental rights are being stripped uh, by, by, from Black parents in an alarming rate. That's part of it. Number three, Black community control of the police. We demand the immediate withdrawal of all domestic military occupation force from Black communities. This democratic demand assumes the ability of Black people to mobilize for our own security and to redefine the role of the police so that it is no longer functions as an agency imposed on us from outside. Number four, free all political prisoners. Number four, free all political prisoners. Number four, free all political prisoners. This includes politicized prisoners who may have originally been imprisoned for non-political reasons, but who's, who, who's achieved political consciousness after imprisonment resulted, uh, in, uh, resulted uh, in political acts or statements that were punished by specialized treatment and sometimes additional present, uh, uh, prison time. Number five, roll back and end mass incarceration. Freedom all. Uh, <clears throat> number, uh, uh, number six. Uh, reparations. Uh, we demand reparations uh, consistent with international norms regarding redress of crimes against humanity. Number seven, self-defense. We declare our human right to arm self-defense uh, from the violent attacks by white citizens and the assaults and, and murders by domestic military organizations and forces that include various police organizations. Number eight, nationalize the banks and end forever the rule of capital. Number nine, full employment and national minimum income. That's different from $2, from $10, $15 an hour over a number of years. They say, we're not talking about, we're not talking about just a, 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 a minimum wage. We're talking about a, a national minimum income. Uh, uh, these are some of the things that we will find in this program. You're not gonna find it in the Democratic Party program. You're not gonna find Kamala Harris, even with the ability, the courage to say that. Number 10, the right to housing. Number 11, stop gentrification. Number 12, black businesses must be nurtured. Uh, uh, number uh, 13, right to free education through postgraduate level. Number 14, free universal quality health care for all. Not Obamacare, not Biden care, not Kamala Harris care, not the Democratic Party care, but free universal quality health care for all. 15, voting rights. 16, US out of Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Uh, 17, the West must pay its debt to Africa and its descendants. 18, free Palestine, down with Israel apartheid. And 19, climate change and toxic uh, pollution created by capitalism must end. 
That's your program. That's the program we took through 10 different states and the District of Columbia had conventions there and then had a national convention in Washington, DC uh, that adopted this program. So you don't have to wait uh, for the Democratic Party. You have a program. You need to be in Washington, DC on November 6th. Then on number them, November 7th, we'll have a rally at Malcolm X Park, November, uh, and then we'll march on the White House. And then we'll have another rally across the street from the White House at Lafayette Park. And then on, num on, uh, on November 8th, we'll have a conference there that deals with the question that we just raised uh, uh, Black power matters, uh, uh, Black community control of the police, and death to colonialism. I'm Omali Ishtatella. I'm the chairman of the African People's Socialist Party uh, and the African Socialist International. I'm leader of the Uhuru movement and the International African Revolution. Thank you for being with us. We'll talk again next Wednesday. Uhuru.